But I do know this. That God intends, expects, demands His people who love Him to express it through service in His church. So the question that begs to be asked is, what is your ministry? What are you doing to express your love for God by serving His people? What, what would happen if you, we took away the people who are teaching your children and grandchildren right now? What would happen if we took the people away who are rocking the babies? What would happen if we took the people away who play the instruments and sing the songs and play the band and do the sound and do the lights and prepare the communion? You ever even thought about who prepares the communion so we can celebrate the Lord's Supper every Sunday morning? You ever thought about that? Typically it's, and, and I probably shouldn't mention their name, but this morning I saw a little Carter Kingston in there preparing the communion with Jim Lyle. And usually Albert's in there and Julie James and folks like that who get here early to prepare God's meal for us. What would happen if we took all those people away? Well, we wouldn't have a service. The fact of the matter is some of God's most anonymous servants are some of His most important servants. Have you ever wondered why you're here at Southwest Christian Church? You're here because God has given you something to do for Him. Now maybe your health doesn't allow you to rock babies, but maybe you can write notes or call them. But you're here at Southwest because He wants you to serve Him. Not just sit and soak and sour but to expend your gifts for His glory. And furthermore, we need you. We need you. The important thing is to remember that your life is to be given in service to God. The question that you need to ask yourself is what on earth am I doing for heaven's Sake. Where's your ministry? Where's your service? I ran across this letter that was written back in 2003. It was written by a missionary who was headed to Iraq to do service. Her name is Karen Watson. Karen was killed along with four other missionaries after she'd been there a year. She died in March of 04. I'll read just a few excerpts. She writes, Dear Pastor Phil and Pastor Roger, you should only be opening this letter in the day of my death. When God calls, there are no regrets. I tried to share my heart with you as much as possible, my heart for the nations. I wasn't called to a place. I was called to Him. To obey was my objective, to suffer was expected. His glory, my reward. His glory, my reward. I think that could be written by Martha Wade, Jonathan Heather Powell, and countless others who are serving him. And they would simply say to you, we're not sacrificing, we're serving. And the point is, he's called all of us to serve him right where we are. We don't have to go. We can stay and serve him gladly and enjoy the reward of the service itself. The truth of the matter is, we are called to serve God. And according to our text, God notices, does not ignore, but sees our work. John Smith was a loyal carpenter working for a very successful contractor. He'd been one of uh, the contractor's most faithful servants. And so one day the contractor called John into his office and said, we're building a new house. It's a beautiful house. And I want you to take charge of this project. This will be your first project you take charge of from the ground up. Everything you've got. So he handed John the blueprints. John studied them for 10 days. Every specification, every detail. He was really excited. And one day 
before he started the project, he had a thought. This house is magnificent, and it calls for the finest materials. What would happen if I cut some corners and used, used second grade materials instead of first grade materials and reported that I used first grade materials and put the difference in my pocket? Nobody would ever notice when it was painted, it would look perfect. And so that's what he decided to do. He ordered second grade lumber, reported first grade, put the difference in his pocket. Second grade concrete, reported first grade. All the materials, reported first grade, ordered second grade, put the difference in his pocket. When it was painted, it looked perfect. It looked just like the specifications. The contractor came and saw it. He was delighted with John's work. He said, John, I am so delighted. And I'm so thankful for your faithful service all these years. Out of my gratitude, I want to give you this house so you and family, your family can live in it. Threw him the keys. God will not forget your work and my work. God will not forget your service and my service. What are you building for today and for eternity? His glory, my reward. My reward is His glory. Amen. God, thank You that You trust us enough to serve You. That You gift us to serve you. That you have these plans already in mind, in mind for us to do for you. Give us the courage, the wisdom to make you the God, the Lord of our life. And in so doing, help us to find exactly what you want us to do. To serve you and your church and your people. For your glory. For our love.